Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out patterned paper using your Brother Scan and Cut SDX125. You can follow along with whichever model of Scan and Cut you have. And this paper is going to be something that is not available right now, just to let you know. For customers, it'll be available at my Stampin' Up! store on January 5th. But from any Stampin' Up! demonstrator, or you know, especially my team members who I know love this paper, uh, this is dedicated to you because I know you already have this and you can start cutting it now. For the rest of you, you have something to look forward to in just a few short weeks. And if you'd like to request a catalog, let me let me close that. It's in this mini catalog. Mm, I can't open the catalog yet, but you can request it using the link in the description of this video. All right, we're going to cut out this page. It doesn't get easier than this page here. This is what the scan and cut is best is best used for. You have good contrast between the foreground and the background. The artist of this designer series paper didn't put anything next to these images. These are perfect for cutting with the scan and cut. Therefore, it's my new favorite paper in the new mini catalog. Okay, I'll just show you the other side of the paper and I'll show you, I'll talk about the coordinating colors and I'll show you all the paper and then we're just gonna get started and start playing. Okay, so the coordinating colors, this is this is real red, and you can see there's little hearts on that paper. Okay. Um, this is, there's the mushrooms, real red, there's Bermuda Bay. Sorry, I'm wearing my reading glasses and it's kind of hard for me to see these coordinating colors right now. But it's, it's Daffodil Delight, Bermuda Bay, real red, Blushing Bride, Whisper White. Okay, so when I see cute little patterns like this, I know these would also cut out because the scan and cut can cut out little things like this. But I like to use the smaller patterns for my little diaper fold treat pouches and I like to use them for card backgrounds. So I decided to try cutting out the three larger pieces from this designer series paper. And they were I had 100% success rate, which is rare for a designer series paper, meaning I didn't have any problems whatsoever cutting, cutting out the images. Okay, so this piece here, we'll cut out a little piece of that one. Some snails, some little gifts. I didn't cut out the paper airplanes because if you were to cut out these paper airplanes, you'd have to connect. These are, there's too many dashes. I would have to connect this to the little swirly and I didn't really need them for, for my projects. I wanted these snails for embellishments. I think that was all six sheets. Okay, so when you get a pack of designer stage paper, you get 12, 12 sheets in a pack. So we're gonna cut out, we'll start out with this little guy here. That way we'll just cut out this this little guy with the mustache, this snail here, and a couple pieces of mail. I'll show you how to make a selection. Okay, other things, you know, you'll learn other tricks, tips and tricks along the way, such as how to scan just part of your mat, um, how to make an outline on your scanned images so that when you cut out your pattern paper, you can have little little layers to your patterns, okay? So basically just stick your paper down on the mat, okay? That's all. That's what you're gonna do. Now, you need to turn off your overhead light. Like I'm gonna turn off this overhead light now because if you don't, it will impact your scan. Well, it won't, it, it's not necessarily gonna impact your scan, but what, what happened is when I did the calibration, meaning the scanning, cutting, position adjustment, of which you, I've done many tutorials on YouTube about that. When I did that, I had the light off. So therefore, when I'm gonna scan and use the machine now, I need to have the, the light off so that the calibration will, will be consistent. Okay, so if, if you calibrate it with the light on, then of course you probably leave the light on. But either way, you shouldn't have light shining in the side of your machine. In that case, it was, shi it was shining in from the side. All right, so let's see if my little tools are available. I have my little pouch. You might have seen me do this one. Uh, the vinyl tutorial recently where I, I personalized my little pouch that my friend Masaka gave me. Anyway, when you turn on your machine, you're gonna see pattern and scan. You're gonna select scan. We're going to directly cut out these images. So you're gonna click se select direct cut. And this is just asking where you temporarily wanna store the data. We're gonna store it on the machine. And here's where you can scan in just the part you need. So because I only have a little piece of paper on the top half of the mat, I'm gonna click here in the settings and I'm gonna change the scan area to 12 by six. Okay, and if you're, if you're using a CM model, you won't have this option. You'll just go ahead and scan the whole 12 by 12 sheet. Everything else is the same. Even though this is a color piece of paper, it has really good contrast, really nice black outlines. Therefore, recognition mode, leave it on black and white, 
because the color recognition mode, this button here, takes much longer. And you don't need it. If you don't need it, then don't waste your time doing color recognition mode. Only use color recognition mode if you really need, if your black and white recognition mode is not working for your project. In that case, you might want to use the color recognition mode. So what it's doing now is it's scanning in that piece of paper, which is just really like the size of a card front. I just have a little piece of that and I'm going to just cut out a couple snails. Okay, so here's here's what I want to cut out just that area. So we're going to click OK and then we're going to click. We're going to select just that area. Okay. Now you're you're wondering what is all that? That's just the dirt on my mat. Okay, so of course you don't want to have to worry about the dirt on your mat. You're going to get rid of that by selecting an area. Okay. Now the other thing you can do is ignore th this. These partial images they're not going to cut because they're they're not enclosed, so they can't cut. So you can ignore object size. I want to only I only want to cut these little letters. I think they're they're bigger than half an inch. We can ignore half an inch. They're not bigger than an inch though, so you don't want to ignore objects too big because if you ignore objects too big, you're going to ignore the very thing you're trying to cut out. So we can ignore object size. We can make the selection. And lastly, the other way to get rid of the unwanted bits is we can edit those out. So we can click on the edit and we can just edit. There's the little snail with the mustache and it's not selected because it's not enclosed. Everything in the scan and cut that you want to cut out has to be enclosed. If it's not enclosed, it's not going to cut out. But when I say 106% success rate, I'm talking about all these images here. I'm going to zoom in because they are enclosed. That's why there was a 100% success rate. Of course, the half images, unless I put a line down the page, they're not going to cut out because there's nothing to enclose it. The scan and cut can't recognize it. Okay, lastly, so after we edited out the bits we don't want, we're going to click on this button here and we're going to put an outline distance of 0 0.04. And that just puts a nice white outline around the stamp, or around actually the pattern paper in this case, or the stamped image, whatever you're trying to scan and cut. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start, and it's going to detect. This is an auto blade, so it's going to detect the depth of the paper, and then it's going to just cut accordingly. It senses the blade depth it needs. It senses the pressure it needs. But if you're using a CM model, you're not going to have that auto blade option in the, in that case you're going to want to go with a blade depth of three for design or series paper. That will eventually be in the description of this video. And this is what we're going for. That's the outline distance we're going for. An even outline distance around the outside of the, of the pattern paper. Okay, it's doing a really good job and it's almost done. So now we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we could unload the map, but instead we're going to just go back home and we'll do another one in a minute. So just going to click home and delete all patterns. Now, I don't want to unload the map because I've been fighting with my scan and cut lately. This is, it, we have a love hate, me and the SDX 125 have a love hate relationship. Whereas my CM models, both of those guys are like my little workhorse of my fleet. Workhorses. They do a better job, but they don't have auto blade and they're much louder. And I don't usually use them on tutorials as much, but I do use them sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to peel that off. That's the piece. Save this because this is great for punching out shapes. And your Bermuda Bay, you can use this for a lot of things. So don't don't get rid of all your scraps of designer series paper. So as I was saying, my friend Misako made me this little pouch. She gave it to me at Thanksgiving. And so right after Thanksgiving, that same weekend, I showed how to create this little personalization with holographic vinyl for the pouch and now I won't lose my tools and I do have a I do have a place to store the tools underneath but the latch broke okay so what I'm doing is it's just going under there with the spatula I guess you'd call it a latch let me get a piece of something to put this behind see see how cute he came out okay so in this in this snail mail suite snail mail there are some stamps and there are some dies, and I am getting those. They just weren't available at the time when I did my pre-order. And um, they're not going to cut everything in the pattern paper, but they do cut some of the things. But even though they do, I'm going to use the dies that I get more for the cute little stitched envelopes that come with them. And these guys, since I can cut a whole page at once, I prefer to use the scan and cut, even when I have the die, because I prefer to cut out a whole page of, of items at once. But the dies are good for stitching. Stitch, stitching the Metal dies do a better job stitching, whereas the scan and cut does a better job with a whole sheet of paper.
Okay, so, so far so good. Now, let's just do that a little faster with this piece here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on there. And I'm only gonna, I'll just cut out a snail and maybe a gift, okay? So what I'm gonna do, and I am gonna ignore the airplane. So here we go. We're back home, scan, direct cut, store it on your machine, start. I'm just doing this a little faster with just this now. Because when in my practice, in preparing for this tutorial, I did do three different pieces of the paper, and that's what I just want to show you, those three. Okay, you're going to say okay, and see that it even selects the ones I've already cut out. Let's just get a snail and a gift. Okay. That's good. And then the airplane, we, we need to ignore the airplane. So ignore object size, that little paper airplane. Again, about a half an inch or so. My camera's a little shaky now because my first tripod is, it, it kind of fell apart during one of my live videos recently. Click OK. And so I'm using a different tripod, which is fine. I can go ahead and get the airplane, but I'm not going to get the little swirl behind it. We'll just get the airplane. Okay, we're going to say, I clicked, I put a 0 0.04 outline distance. I select cut and I go. Okay, so I did that one faster just so you can see how fast this really is once you get the hang of it. And I did a little slower on the first round just to show you how to do it. And then now we're just doing it a little faster. Okay, so why do I always put an outline distance around my Im images? I just think it's more forgiving. Um, if you try to cut along the line, it, it just never. No matter how much you calibrate it, it doesn't really do like a perfect job cutting along the black line. And some will argue that theirs does, but mine just doesn't. I like to put a little outline distance because it kind of, it just, it just is more forgiving. And it just looks nicer for the kind of embellishments I like to have. Okay, so that's it for that. Now we're gonna just, okay, we're just gonna focus that. There's my little snail from that sheet. And he's kind of the basics of the snail mail. He's he's like he's like the little happy mail happy mail snail mail. And there's a little paper airplane. Okay, so that's that's that. So that's how you do it. Now let's do the mushrooms. Let's get the mushrooms. Now I didn't cut the small mushrooms. I'm sure the scan and cut would cut the small mushrooms because they are isolated. They have good contrast. But I thought this paper is fantastic for the scan and cut. I even cut out some of the grass. But you know what? I'm gonna show you the grass. I didn't really need to cut out the grass. Here we go. Because it really doesn't do anything. I'd rather just use one of my grass stamps if I'm gonna use grass. I don't I don't really need the I don't need the grass in Bermuda Bay, I just didn't need it. So if you're new to my channel, you you know that I'm gonna be showing you projects at the end of this video, so definitely stick around. I always show my projects of what you can do with this at the end of my video. Okay? So now we we go back to the beginning home. Okay, why am I showing you the mushrooms? I have something special with the mushrooms. Direct cut. This part's the same. Go back to the home screen, scan, direct cut, store to your machine, right? That's the same. That's the part I did slow at the beginning. But there's going to be a little difference here in the mushrooms. After we cut out a couple mushrooms, I'll just select a small area. So right now it's using this, the top part of the mat. So I want to go and even select smaller. I'm gonna select even a smaller area just to get like here, this big mushroom. And I don't even want all those other mushrooms, just maybe a couple, because I probably should use my stylus. Yeah, I, d I just want two full mushrooms, just to give you an idea of what to do here. Okay, we're gonna click preview. Okay, and ignore up, well, I, can, I can just edit out the mushrooms I don't want. I'm gonna click okay. So we're gonna edit out this mushroom. I don't want it because it's it's part of a mushroom. And this one, I don't want that one. It's part of a mushroom. Only because I cut it off. It wouldn't it would totally scan in just fine. But when I made a selection, these three are good. That's good enough. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna put an outline distance of 0 0.04. And there's a couple little spots I still need to ignore. I should have just done ignore object size. Delete. I, if I would have done ignore object size, I wouldn't have to manually delete these little guys out. 
when you when you have because I'm all about tips and tricks here when you can't really figure out how to touch that it won't let me touch it with my stylus just toggle this is the selection toggle it will select between all the objects on the screen and you'll get to that eventually and you'll also get to find out if you have any stray bits so now I have my three mushrooms and that's fine for what I want to show you so first pass 0 0.04 outline distance we're going to go ahead and cut that and I'm going to talk about why I'm doing this part when I saw these mushrooms and if you saw my unboxing of my Stampin' Up! products recently on YouTube, I got so excited when I saw these mushrooms and I said, I want to use these mushrooms with the gnomes, my gnome for the holiday set. So what I did, in, but I wanted to make the mushrooms sort of pop, pop off the page because the gnomes are really tiny, right? I wanted the, these giant mushrooms to make the gnomes look even tinier. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut out the mushrooms and then we're going to make another layer for the mushrooms. We're gonna take a piece of, so let's just click okay. So first, I'll just show you that. So first thing we did was just cut out the mushrooms. Okay, now you wanna take your, you wanna take, we're gonna make another layer. So let's get these off the mat. They look fantastic, by the way. And this is, these go great with my gnomes. I've already tried it. So I wanted to cut out the designer series paper first, and I wanted to just tell you that, look, when you do cut out cardstock, it's very fuzzy and very fibrous, and it's gonna make your mat less sticky. So you can get that off with a baby wipe. In between time of using your zig glue, your two-way glue, which I teach you how to use for re-sticking purposes. Uh, we're gonna put this, we're gonna put this on the mat. Make, we wanna make sure it's in the place where, the, where we just cut the mushrooms out. So this is a piece of real red cardstock. Again, the fibers are gonna stick to your mat. You're gonna use a baby wipe to get those off. Later though, you need to re-stick your mat after using cardstock on your mat because you're, you're gonna lose its stickiness because there's lots of fibers. The more fibers in your paper, the more you're gonna lose your stickiness. All right, so here we go. Gonna go, you're gonna click, this is what you're gonna do. To make a layer, you're gonna click the back button and you're gonna click on the outline distance and you're gonna go 0 0.08 because you're gonna cut out these three mushrooms with a 0 0.08 outline distance, which is just slightly larger than what we just cut out. And then we're gonna click cut. Don't go hitting point 12, because if you hit point 12, they're gonna meld into one giant blob. One, if you make your outline distances too big, the, the objects start melding or welding into each other. So right now, point 0 0.08 is perfect for this paper. It doesn't, they don't, the mushrooms don't touch each other on the mat. Okay, so why real red cardstock? Because that's one of the coordinating colors with this, with this suite. And the suite again is called Snail Mail Suite. Okay, so let's just go over. Let me just let me focus that. Make sure. Now, if I were to, I'm I'm not gonna do. It. I'm I'm done with the machine. But let me just go back and show you what I mean. If you keep on increasing your outline distance, they start touching each other. See, and then they start overlapping, and they don't cut out right. So don't do that. Leave it at point. If you want to make an out, only in this particular paper. Now, for every paper, it's different. But for this particular paper. Snail, snail mail, you're gonna use the point zero four outline distance for your first pass. That's this pass, okay? This is the first pass. The second pass is cardstock, the second layer. That's point zero eight. If you wanna make a third layer, you're gonna end up cutting into each other. So don't make a third layer for this one, but there are other kinds you can make a, you know, a, a, you can make, oh, and by the way, so now we're all done with this machine and I can actually unload the mat, see? I can unload the mat now, and that's all. Let me just, let me turn on my light now. I can turn my overhead light back on because I didn't turn it on during scanning purposes because if I had d turned it on during scanning, it would have affected the scan. All right, so there's our mushrooms. There's our layers. And again, this is fibrous paper, so it comes up a little fuzzy, and sometimes you have to take your paper snips just to get a little bit of that fuzz off. But that's just because... This paper's been dyed, and when it when they dye it, it's stamping up. I mean, it just it just becomes a little bit more fibrous than the designer series paper, which is not. It's like printed on. Okay, so that one's good. This mushroom's good, and this mushroom's good. So now we're gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna show you my projects. So let's get some paper to use as background here. Okay, we'll use um. To show you my projects, we'll just use this Blushing Bride background. I don't want to tilt my, I know my camera might be at a funky angle, but if I tilt it too much, I risk, it's going to start drooping again. This is called an Archon, Archon? Yeah, 
Archon stand, but it's droopy. Mine is droopy. Maybe my phone is too heavy. It just gets kind of droopy. So here, I already lost the other mushroom. Oh, where, where is my mushroom? It doesn't matter. So you get the idea. I have one from before. So here's my mushrooms from before. So we'll just use that one to show you. So what you're, what, what I did is I made, I made layers. Okay, so the mushrooms we cut out, see? You can layer them up like that. Isn't that fantastic? And then they look really, then they pop off the page and they look bigger. So when I use them with my, with my little gnomes, which I did for one of the projects I'm gonna show you, they made them look even, the mushrooms looked even bigger, making my gnomes look even smaller. All right, so. I wonder, I'm trying to think of where the other mushroom is I cut out, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The point is, that's, that's what we did and that was successful. So now you know, so to just review, we cut out these without an outline distance. I mean, sorry, with a 0 0.04 outline distance. And then we cut these ones out with a 0 0.04 and then a 0 0.08. So now it's, I'm ready to show you the projects you can create with the embellishments that you create using your scan and cut. So now my microphone is attached to my, I have to get over here across the room let me grab all these projects. So in this snail mail suite, which again, I can't show you the inside of the catalog, but it's in this 2021 catalog. And demonstrators who have joined Stampin' Up! before January 5th are allowed to order this right now at, until January 5th or up until January 4th as part of their starter kit. You can get products from this catalog in your starter kit. But otherwise, customers have to just wait until January 5th to get this. So here's the, in that suite is this Snailed It stamp set. Okay, super cute. So now you're gonna see projects I did using that Snailed It stamp set. Okay, I'll start with a card. Okay, I used Happy, this is a card I made with these embellishments that we cut out just now, the scan and cut. And as you can see, I, I used the stamp called Happy Mail Enclosed. And then I used this, I used this little snails from the paper, cut out with the scan and cut, 0 0.04 outline distance. And then here's one of the layered mushrooms. Say so it makes it pop because it's contrasting on the background. I put that red layer behind it, okay? So that's what you can do with your embellishments. I think they're just blank inside. I didn't do anything to the inside of that one. The reason I like to save the small patterns of my designer series papers. I think they make great card backgrounds. Okay, the next project. I was, I have, every time there's a new catalog, I create using, let me find the stamp set. Every time there's a new catalog, I create something for any, any new team members that might join during that catalog period. So I have this stamp set. This is a demonstrator only stamp set. And it, it has a really cool Happy Mail stamp in it as well. I use on my envelopes Happy Mail. But it has this Welcome to the Team stamp. And I really like this Welcome to the Team stamp. And I've been making cards with gnomes. That's what my team members have been getting if they joined. They got a few little gnomes and it said Welcome to the Team. But now with these Happy Mails snails, I thought, oh my goodness, this is exactly what my team is all about. The Papered Chefs. We're the Papered Chefs. And we send Happy Mail to people. So it's perfect for welcoming my team members. Like this is what my whole philosophy is about crafting. It's all about making others happy and it's all about sharing and, and happy mail. So, I mean, these are the little team members. You got your snail and then your little snail and another snail and a, and a little snail with a mustache. We even have a couple guys, well, we have one guy on our team and a couple uh, husband, wives, uh, couple, couples on the team. So anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's our team, <laughs> the paper chefs. So this, what I did for this is I stamped right onto the Whisper White. And you might have seen me do this during my unboxing live with this snail here, this snail here. I stamped them right onto the paper. I colored it with the Stampin' Blends, coordinating Stampin' Blends. I, I had a pink one that was retired, but I used Daffodil Delight, Bermuda Bay, Real Red, and I think it's called Pink Pirouette. It's a retired kind of pink because I didn't have Blushing Bride Blends, but I think it matched pretty well. And then these are all the little embellishments that we just cut out during the, with the scan and cut and that's it blank inside okay so this is my new card I'm gonna be making with different pieces of designer series paper I'll be using that for celebration you know when we have a big special I used a piece of this is um, Bermuda Bay cardstock a piece of blushing bride back there 
and what else? That's it. Little pieces of designer series paper and some whisper white. Bermuda Bay on the sentiment from Welcome to the Team. Okay, now I'm going to show you my gnome card with my giant mushrooms. <laughs> Here's what I was thinking. This I had in my head I was going to make the gnome match these this color scheme. So what I did is I took the gnome from the gnome from the holidays stamp set, which I've been using the heck out of this season, and I took this gnome and I colored his little hat pink and I colored his little outfit Bermuda Bay to match this paper and his little shoes red and the gray matches anything and that was it and I colored his little face with some ivory and then I put the giant mushrooms that we just cut out with the layers and the layers really make them look bigger even and they make them pop and I, I put them up on dimensionals so they pop up more and I put the gnome I didn't put the gnome on I put him on dimensionals but I didn't put an outline around him so that he wouldn't look he would look even smaller compared to those gigantic mushrooms there's no place like gnome for the Christmas season. And blank inside. This is Blushing Bride. Okay, so there's so much you can do when you have these embellishments. And then you have a bucket of crafty goodness, I call it. And you just you just cut out pages and pages of these. You have them all ready. I'll be cutting out the rest of that pack. Well, at least half the pack because I'm trying to save some for my share. Okay, this was... I just wanted to show you what, I, what I'm doing here. So my team member, Crystal, says... Her philosophy, she says... Build it, they will come. So I'm going to make the cards. I'm going to make the cards for potential team members. In other words, they, then they'll be ready. But see, this is what the card looks like before I decorate it, right? And that's after I decorate it. So you can just see how, like, now when you do your stamping, then that stamping is only, this is the only stamping on this card. So then I can color this with blends and I'm ready. And then all I got to do, right, after I color it with blends, is put on the cute embellishments and there'll be different papers, whatever papers I have write a special note, right? So that that's just an idea. It's the rectangular postage stamp pack, I forgot to tell you that, which is currently available now because it fits perfect with the Happy Mail enclosed. And even if there is a die that goes with this, I think it's so much easier to use a punch. I don't even know what kind of dies I'm getting. I just know that there's this cute little tiny stitched envelope that's coming. So that's what that looks like. All right, so then I made my signature item is the the um, these little pouches. And I made three of these, so I'll show you the three pouches. So these are, these is the diaper fold. And again, that's why I like to save these pattern paper. The smaller patterns are perfect for little things like this. Tag treats, diaper folds, wrapping Hershey nuggets. They're just good for that kind of thing, wrapping candies, because the small patterns are cute. And you can stamp the hello. Here's, the, here's how small the hello is, right from the stamp set. And you can stamp it right onto the mushroom. You probably could stamp it right onto the back of the snail as well. I'm not going to right now because he's not on a flat surface, but I could stamp it flat right onto this little snail. Okay, so that's that's the um, mini Ghirardelli treats. But these little guys, these little pouches, let me reach over, going across the room. Okay, you could fit, I'm just going to grab a tea bag out of my tea. Okay, you could put, just so you know what could go in here. Actually, that would look cute too. I'll put, I'll put both in there. I'm going to put a T in there, and I'm going to put the little Ghirardelli mini chocolate because they both, it fits in there. Okay, and then we'll do one for this one too. So this is hello. These are, these little snails are so cute, and they, they're facing each other. I love how they're facing each other. And, I, you know, on the designer series paper, you cut out some each way. That hello, it just so happened to be that it, it this is part of the printed paper, and it just so happened to be like he's talking, and he says hello. See, this is written in other languages too. This one's, you can see the English one on this one. And then I have French and German on the other. We'll put a tea bag in there. And then here's the last one with, I put hello on that one. No, I think it was this one, you can see it. Bonjour, that's the French. Hello, that's the German. And you can see hello on that one. So this was perfect paper for making these, these little Ghirardelli treat holders. All right, so that's that's it. I'm just get finishing that. So if you love designer series paper and you're really interested in seeing and you like stamping up products and you're interested in seeing all the papers that are in this catalog and our celebration brochure, which is a cat, which is a brochure where you can earn free things, then join in my paper share. My paper share. Again, I have to kind of reach. Reach, reach, reach. <laughs> taking off my microphone. My paper share is $40 and you get to try 12 papers. And then if you sign up by December 20th, you get the early bird special with at least 12 other 
sampler papers. Um, I'm taking orders. What I have to do is order it all and then I send it out in January. Because I can't order all the paper you need, I have to send it out in January. I have a deluxe paper share, which is 30 additional dollars, which gives you lots of specialty papers. And here's the sign up. It's on my website. You can pay with PayPal. Even if you don't have PayPal, it lets you use PayPal checkout. And you can take a picture of that on the screen right now. Shipping is $4 for each paper share, but if you get two paper shares, the shipping is free. But you have to select free shipping at checkout because the shipping isn't automatically free. You have, there's a, I didn't know how to program that. I mean, I'm, I can only program so much. I'm a one woman operation here. And I was able to put, I was able to put an option for free checkout, but I wasn't able to make free checkout automatic. You can just see if you, if you want that option, you have to select it when you get both paper shares. All right, well, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef and hope to see you again very soon.